Welcome back. I'm Chris Chase with the Western Flyer Foundation. And I am back in Salinas, California at Gravel Manufacturing, where the Western Flyer Foundation has got a really cool project going on. We're having a 1947 bus completely restored from the frame up all the way. The seats are out, everything's out, it's getting uh, media blasted. It's really an incredible project. And you're probably at home scratching your head wondering, you know, why are we tackling a bus in the middle of a wood boat project? And that's a great question and I hope this episode kind of answers that a little bit. Kind of shines a little bit of light on what the Western Flyer Foundation is all about. So I hope you enjoy this one. I bet at this point in the video, you're asking yourself, how can a shop full of vintage cars, rat rods, old trucks, a street racer, fit into the story of the Western Flyer? To try to answer that question, you need to start with the mission of the Western Flyer Foundation. At the core of the Western Flyer Foundation, after the dust has settled in the Flyer Restoration and the Western Flyers return to the waters of Monterey, the Foundation is an educational venture, whose fundamental goal is to get young people out into the environment to explore the world around them. The Western Flyer, both in body and spirit, is currently undergoing a restoration to ultimately transform her into an educational platform, working the near coastal waters from Sitka, Alaska to the Sea of Cortez. As the foundation has grown over the last five years, we've begun to develop some educational programs. In the course of developing curriculum, we've also learned that often the biggest hurdle of getting students out of the classroom and out into the field is simply transportation. In comes the bus. See, the Western Flyer Foundation is built around an iconic piece of literary history that is physically limited by where she can sail. And unfortunately, most schools are inland, miles away from the nearest seaport, often leaving teachers searching for ways to transport their students to the onboard programs. If the Western Flyer Foundation can provide some alternative forms of transportation, all the better. This old bus might just be the missing link that helps students reach the Western Flyer. And since the students will be traveling to spend time on a 1937 boat, why not travel in style in a 1947 bus? The bus that is undergoing such a detailed restoration is a 1947 flexible bus. No, that's not a misspelling. They intentionally dropped the E for a trademark reason. The flexible bus company started in Loudonville, Ohio in 1913 as a motorcycle sidecar manufacturer. Shifting with the times, they soon transitioned to the motor coach manufacturing business, which lasted until 1996 when they closed the doors for good. The flexible bus company stayed relatively small for the first few decades, all the way up until the war. But it was the years following World War II when they saw the most rapid growth. Taking advantage of wartime tooling, the flexible company, like so many manufacturers of the day, experienced an explosion in productivity. In 1946, they unveiled the newly designed flexible clipper, which entered into production in 1946, lasting 21 years until 1967. If you rode on any bus in any major city in America during the 50s or 60s, it could have easily been a flexible bus. The bus we're having restored isn't only dripping with cool Art Deco styling, it came with a fantastic story. All the buses that were sold in that year are flexible and Warner Brothers is down there with the bus number and everything. Flexible clippers and the, the bus. So. The Flyer Foundation purchased the bus in 2018 from the Warner Brothers studio lot in Hollywood, California. It was advertised as a discarded movie prop. Warner Brothers originally bought the bus in 1947. It may have been purchased as a movie lot bus used to just transport workers around, or perhaps it was bought solely as a movie prop. No one knows for sure. The one thing we do know for sure is it's made hundreds of cameo appearances in countless films. 
the 1954 Judy Garland, A Star is Born, Rocky, the Columbo TV series. It may have even been the bus in Alfred Hitchcock's 1959 North by Northwest. In that famous biplane scene, you can clearly see the same brand and same vintage of bus pulling away from Cary Grant as he stands alone in a Midwest cornfield with that now infamous biplane bearing down on him. Well, I mean, like I said, I was lived on Warner Brothers Studio most of its life. A lot and, of movies? Yeah, I think <laughs> mo all of the uh, Rocky movies, from what I've been told. Wow. I'm getting it ready to have it media blasted. Uh-huh. What then, does that mean? Just stripping, you know, getting it stripped. What's the media that they use to strip it? What kind of well, sand you know, blast, I'm not, ice blast? They're, it's a wet, it's going to be, it's a dustless system, so there's water involved, but they put a solution in it so it doesn't flash right away with surface rust. Right. Um, I think they just use sand. Uh -huh. um, that's why I have these in here, so I can, you know, it doesn't go in. I don't get a bunch of water inside, but um, once I get it blasted and sealed, then I can start doing body work. Yeah, that's why all this is out. It's, you know, getting ready. Amazing how thick that is compared to a modern. I know. Modern anything. Yeah. I mean, that's a piece of metal. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. The red, I don't blue. think so. I think maybe the blue. Definitely not the red. From all the pictures I've seen, I've never seen one, the red, but. I, I suppose if it was a movie prop, it probably got changed painted all, all the time. Yeah, I think so. Cause there's green, um, there's a, a light green in there. And then on top of that, like a, almost like a beige and then the blue. It has quite a few layers. Do you think this bus ever got used as a passenger bus or has it always just been? I don't, I don't know. I think it went, went right to Hollywood. You know, because when we took out all the seats and stuff, I kept hoping to find like an old watch or something, but there was nothing. And so I think it was just on the, on the Warner Brothers lot its yeah. whole life. like a, an English wheel kind of thing? No, not necessarily English wheel. I'll hammer and dolly it and then I have a, a I could show you, but a, it's yeah, a sh shrinking disc that it works it out really nice. Huh. Huh. Yeah. So. Definitely old school. Wow, gotta go in? Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of dark in here, but. Still. I mean, this thing's been such a nightmare to take apart like, because, you know, from the outside, I saw the screws and I thought, well, we'll just take the screws off and the stainless would come off. Right. Not the case. Not going to happen. The thing comes off and then it comes off from the outside. Um, and then I'll restore each window, new glass and um, paint, put them back in. Do you use heat to break stubborn screws or like cool yeah. oil or Both. penetrating oil? Both. Oh, a little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. A lot of heat, though. A lot of heat. It, it, when you first get in, it feels lower. I mean, my inclination was to, to duck at six foot two right. all the way through, but it's, uh, it's, it's tall. Yeah, the interior is amazing. The Art Deco, the lights, the opera lights, the, this row of lights. I mean, there's lights everywhere in this thing. It's ultimately done. It's, I mean, kind of the vision for the Flyer Foundation is to utilize this as a companion vehicle to the flyer itself, being able to move kids from places like the Salinas Valley where we're now, mm -hmm. down to the boat, down to the seaside, get them out on the water. So right. It partners really well with that. Yeah. Here, I mean, driver's seat was around, that could be reupholstered. It was we, complete. I mean, they unloaded it off the truck and it drove to where it is now. This scale project doesn't happen overnight. The restoration of the bus will be done over the next few years. Windows will be removed. The mechanical equipment will be removed. All the metal surfaces, both inside and out, will be blasted. Following the blasting, any rust, dents, or damaged metal will get fixed or replaced. After all that's done, new mechanical running gear will be installed. A new engine will be installed. The seats will get reupholstered installed. And don't forget about the paint. I mean, there's some rust here and there, but not much. And some panel damage, but it's all stuff that I can easily fix, you know? The biggest hurdle so far is just taking it apart. I slotted these so I can have a couple screws and then slide it on. Because I was trying to do it by myself, trying to hold this and get a screw started, it's so hard. Just 
ridiculous. I'm like, I'm going to make it easier on myself so now I can just slide it on there and then tighten it. And then fit it. This won't be a one and done look at the bus. I get down to Monterey pretty regularly, and I promise every time I'm in the area, I'll put together an episode spotlighting the restoration. I don't know how much I want to modify this to get the frame back. It's going to be a lot of work. Yeah? That'd be awesome. I don't windshield frame in and out of here probably 15 times now. Yeah. Draw it back in. So if you get a, if you get a dent in something shrinking yeah you're bringing it back because the metal's right. expanded into yeah that it's shape. stretched huh. and usually like if there's a low spot you can hammer it out it'll be high because it's you know the metal stretch this thing will you just you know it's just like grinder almost like buffing you know huh. heat it up you can hear it and it changes a little color and then you put a wet cold rag on it or air and this is just, it's just creating friction yeah yep huh. It works, it's amazing. I mean, so this- So you can do it in place on like a side panel on a truck like that, yeah. or a bus? Yep. Huh, is this your invention or is this something- No, no, know? it's something that's been around for a while. They have that, like the smooth, the smooth one. Huh. I have, um, I have a little, little one for like little trim pieces. Like this was really dented and warped and I would just get in there and work it. You can it. bring it back to life. And there's yeah. no, we're not looking at body work or filler. Or no, this doesn't have any on it. I just primered it. This actually looked like a potato chip. It was so bad. And I kept working this until it was flat on my table and scuff it and primer. I mean, it's pretty neat. Strip the primer off and then start hammer and dolling and, you know, huh. working that wheel on it. So pretty much all the body work gets done with the vehicle in place. I mean, it's almost better probably because you have weight to hold the vehicle. You're yeah. not taking a pan, you're not cutting a panel out and then taking it to a bench or an English wheel or any of the I other mean, tools. I mean, you that... can. I don't. I try and do most of it on the car itself, on the frame, bolted to it. I never knew that. That's amazing. I'd love to watch you do that at some point. <laughs>
Hey, that's it, the end of another chapter in the rebuilding of the Western Flyer, or I guess I should say the rebuilding of the 1947 Flexible Bus. Hey, I'll put links in the uh, description box below to everybody involved. Todd's shop here in Salinas, again, the Western Flyer Foundation, my Instagram account, maybe Todd's Instagram account, so this one will be easy to follow along with. But I hope you enjoyed this one, and until the next episode, uh, thanks again for tuning in. Yeah, this is uh, the rec in the back of the wrecking yard in Seaside. I think in, well, it had to be in the 60s. I think it's, does it say right there, 65?